Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another product shootout for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out high-end CPU coolers starting at $60, going up to $125. And this is just part one in a two-part series. In the second video in the series coming in a few weeks, I'll be looking at more expensive coolers starting at $130, going up to $180. So I'll definitely be covering the full gamut of high-end CPU coolers. And I'm really focusing on ones that I know will perform well. A lot of these coolers I've actually already tested and featured on the channel, so I'm not doing a bunch of new tests or running benchmarks on coolers that I've never heard of and maybe you've never heard of. These are going to be top sellers and in this video, frankly, the coolers you're going to see are ones you've definitely heard of, perhaps you've even tried to buy and couldn't find in stock. These are going to be the top sellers. And so the goal here is really to show what you get for your money as you step up in price because each of the coolers I'm testing is a very good cooler. Now, a couple things about my test system. This is my Silent Base 802 chassis from Be Quiet. I absolutely love this chassis. I actually tested it on the channel, did a full review about a month ago, and I gave it a very positive review, but the more I use it for benchmarking, getting in and out of this chassis every day over and over, I love it even more. So honestly, it's a great chassis. I'm not just saying that because I was giving it to review. It's because I'm using it for benchmarking. It's a really good chassis for that purpose. Now. Under the CPU cooler, I'm going to be using a Ryzen 9 3900X processor. I lock it at 4.2 gigahertz. So there's no precision boost overdrive. There's no auto overclocking involved. It's all going to stay constant regardless of the temperature of the CPU. The other components aren't that important for this particular series of videos. I do have an RTX 3080 in here, but at no point will I load this up with games. I'm going to be doing CPU benchmarks straight, no game benchmarks. So this will never be exhausting any inordinate amount of heat into the CPU area. The other thing I should mention about liquid coolers, I do have a liquid cooler mounted in here and I have moved entirely to roof mounting of my radiators. I will not be testing liquid coolers mounted in front of chassis anymore. And so a lot of people have actually asked me to test a cooler that comes in at 420 millimeters from Arctic. You may notice that this is an Arctic 360 up here. Yes, that's actually in this video. The 420 is not. And that's because basically no cases can fit a 420 on the roof. There may be a couple out there, but they're gigantic. And I'm not going to use them for benchmarking. So if you were hoping for me to test the 420, I'm, just, I'm not going to do it. Uh, that's just the stance I'm going to take. You can give me a thumbs down if you want to because of that. But I just don't want to front mount the radiators when all the other radiators are going to be mounted up top. And that's how I believe most people should use their all-in-one liquid coolers. So just I want to get that out of the way first. There is no 420 millimeter radiator test in this roundup. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the coolers I have on the bench today. First up is the $60 Scythe Fuma 2. This is a cooler I have featured extensively on the channel. It's extraordinarily popular, particularly among small form factor PC users due to its compact size. And the only trouble is finding it in stock. Next up, we have the Nocto NHD15 Chromax Black, which comes in at an even $100. This cooler probably needs no introduction to anyone, given that it is considered by many to be the reference air cooler. For good measure, I've also included the NHD15S, which is the offset single fan version of that cooler, here equipped with one of the fans off the D15. And finally, we have the Liquid Freezer 2360 from Arctic. This is an incredibly hot selling cooler, comes in around $125 if you can find it in stock. And its claim to fame is its inclusion of three P12 fans, which are fantastic radiator fans. Now a couple of notes on the installation. Note that the NHD15, despite being very large, left a lot of space at the top of my case, whereas the Liquid Freezer 2 360 at 65 millimeters thick made very good use of that extra headroom. It looks like a natural fit in my Be Quiet Silent Base 802 chassis. And while all the coolers included their own thermal paste, like this packet of MX4 included with the Liquid Freezer 2 360, I decided to even the playing field by upgrading them all to Noctua's NTH2. Take note, this is not what's included with Noctua coolers. They get NTH1 in the box. All right, now it's time to get in the benchmark, starting with idle at the desktop. And the main focus here is really looking at the minimum RPM and minimum noise levels of each of these coolers. I'm not particularly concerned about the temps although I'll discuss that in a minute. So here I did draw those fans down all the way to their minimum. Below these levels, they would not spin. So the lowest RPM fans are actually on the Noctua and the Arctic cooler. And the Scythe Fuma 2 was at 361 RPM. It was a little bit louder at that level, but it's still very quiet. Keep in mind that 30 decibels is the noise floor for this system. Below that, I wouldn't be able to detect it. 
So here, you know what? The NHD15S with its single fan and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2360 with its three fans are on par. And I'm particularly impressed by that Liquid Freezer 2360 because it also has a pump going. And even despite that and the three fans, it's extremely quiet. Now, take note that the D15S is a little bit hotter here, and I don't think that that's just a coincidence. We're going to see this pattern repeat itself as we get into the next benchmark. So what we've got here is CPU-Z looped for five minutes at the maximum RPM levels of each cooler, and clearly the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 is the best here in terms of temps at 65 degrees, although the Noctua NHD15 is close behind at 66, albeit at a slightly higher decibel level. And decibels do matter. One decibel is actually pretty audible. So if you think that there's no difference between 36, 37, and 38, well, you are mistaken. And that means the Scythe Luma 2 is extraordinarily quiet here at 34.5 decibels at maximum RPM. It is a very quiet cooler and still comes in at 68 degrees, which is very respectable. In fact, beating the NHD15S at its maximum RPM level of 1,415 RPM. Moving on to the decibel normalized benchmarks, there are some really interesting results because not much changes. With the Scythe Fuma 2, literally nothing has changed because its maximum RPM was below the 35 decibel noise normalized level, so I just used the same data. This is actually at 34.5 decibels. And then if you look at the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 and the NHD15S, the results are exactly the same in terms of temps as they were with the faster fans at maximum RPM. The only cooler here that actually increases in temps is the NHD15. And that just goes to show that if you have a cooler that is a little bit louder than you'd like, you may just want to try backing off the maximum RPM because you may not increase your temps at all. I have found again and again that fans get very ragged at their maximum RPM limit and often perform just as well at a lower RPM with lower noise. Next up is Cinebench R20. This is my extreme load benchmark. While both it and CPU-Z push the CPU to 100%, not all 100% loads are created equal. This actually demands an additional 30 watts of power. So this is a 145 watt load and that's just the CPU. This is actually pulling 215 watts from the wall. And on average, the CPU is running four degrees hotter in this test. Again, this is my maximum RPM test and I'm measuring decibels at 24 inches or two feet from the front of the case. Now take note that the general order here is the same with the Scythe Fuma 2 kind of at the rear tied with the Noctua NHD15S more or less and then the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2360 out in front, not by that much. Again, the Noctua NHD15 is very impressive for an air cooler definitely distancing itself from both the Fuma 2 and its cousin, the NHD15S. But overall, I do think the Freezer 2 360 is superior given that it has better temps at a slightly lower noise level. Both of these top coolers, however, have a distinct advantage in terms of VRM temps over the Fuma 2 and the NHD15S. And that's because in the case of the D15, you have that front fan that is blowing a significant amount of air underneath the cooler and towards the VRMs. And then of course, with the Liquid Freezer 2 360, there's actually a dedicated VRM fan. And you also have the top mounted radiator fans pulling air out of the CPU area and away from the VRMs. So for extreme overclockers, these are the two coolers you're gonna to wanna to be focusing on. Finally, as we get into the decibel normalized results, we see the exact same thing happen as we had with CPU-Z. Only one of these coolers actually showed different performance with the slower fans, and that was the D15, which is a little bit hotter here. The Fuma 2, again, is actually operating at exactly the same speed because its highest RPM level actually produces under 35 decibels. And then the D15S and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360, when the RPM is lowered, they perform just as well. With the D15S, the results aren't that surprising. I only had to drop it down from 36 to 35 decibels and only knock 50 RPM off the fan level, but the Liquid Freezer 2 360 actually dropped 180 RPM off of its max to get to that 35 decibel level down from 37 in the previous benchmark. And yet the performance is identical. And I know some people are saying, well, what if you had a hotter running CPU? Yes, there are 
hotter running CPUs than the 3900X, but not many. So I think you have to take that into consideration when you look at these results. Most users will be able to lower the overall noise levels without giving up any performance by doing some simple tuning. And I should mention, I use a software package called Argus Monitor, which was actually recommended to me by many of my viewers. It's a fantastic software package. Cost $20 for a three-year license. I would definitely recommend you guys check it out. You can download it for free, see if it works for you. And then if you like it, give the developer a few bucks and you'll enjoy that software going forward. Now, before I get into my conclusion, I wanna leave you with one more thing, an audio sample of the Liquid Freezer 2360 running at its maximum 37 decibels and then the 35 decibel noise normalized level. I think you'll be able to tell the difference easily. All right, well, what can I say? All these coolers are really good, and that was kind of the point of the shootout. I didn't choose coolers that I thought would fail, but if there were one odd man out, it may have been the Noctua NHD15S, the single fan offset version of the very popular D15. It put up decent benchmarks, but it was really beaten by the Fuma 2, and I've actually benchmarked it a number of times. A couple of times I've found the D15S to surpass the Fuma 2, but that's mostly in small form factor systems where I think its bigger fan helps, and the smaller fans on the Fuma 2 have a little bit more trouble when there's no case airflow. But for most people, the Fuma 2 is gonna be preferable, and even for small form factor builders, this is gonna be the better option because it fits so much better than a D15S, and definitely better than a D15 in small form factor systems. Of the other coolers I tested, well, I really like the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 that I have mounted here. This is going to be my personal cooler. This is what I will be using in my personal system. It is so incredibly quiet. It performs so well. The price is great and it looks so primo. It's just got such a pro look. It looks like a custom setup. I love the braided tubes. I love how it's blacked out up here. Arctic really knocked it out of the park. And frankly, this actually was released like a year ago and it's been so hard to find ever since. I've talked to Arctic about this. They assure me that these are gonna be restocked soon. They know there's a lot of demand for it. They can meet the demand, they just have to catch up. Of course, there's a lot of supply chain issues right now, but they're going to bring out a, a whole new stock of these. So get ready to press that buy button because this is a fantastic cooler. Now, one thing I should mention about the D15, look, I think it's pretty clear that Noctua needs to update it, not because it doesn't perform well, but because liquid coolers have caught up. And I think that what we'll be seeing is something like a D16 coming out maybe at the end of 2021, maybe early 2022. It's gonna be similar. Maybe we'll have an offset design for easier installation, but one thing we'll definitely have is different fans. The A14 fans on the D15 are not actually that great. They're decent, they've done fine over the years for Noctua, but there's almost definitely gonna be an upgrade to that cooler using a new larger version of the NF812X25, which I've shown to work so well in various shootouts on the channel. So look, in no way did Noctua lose this battle. It's a really great manufacturer of coolers. They know what they're doing, but they have to refresh their lineup from time to time. And I think the D15 is still a fantastic air cooler, but my preference is this cooler. It's a little bit more expensive, but it performs a little bit better. It's a little quieter and I like the look of it, and it's also easier to work around. So as a benchmarker, I can't have the D15 in my chassis. It's just too big. This one, I can get around, I can access my RAM, my GPU, I can see what's going on, plug and unplug cables. It's just a really nice setup. And of course, again, the performance is there. So for me, it's no question. This is the winner in my book. For everyone else, I really do recommend the Fuma 2. If you can find it in stock, this thing has been selling like crazy since early 2020. It's a fantastic cooler, $60. It will take a lot for any manufacturer to match the Fuma 2. So, you know, maybe actually Scythe will come out with a revision 2, or maybe we'll call it a Fuma 3. The one thing I'd probably like to see is an updated color scheme. Some people have commented that the gray and black fans don't look that modern. I agree. They should probably go with an all black trim. They could black out the heat sink. I don't care that much about that. Just black fans would definitely add to the aesthetics of this cooler, but other than that, it's it's 
totally unbeatable at $60. So there you have it, a roundup of the best coolers from $60 to $125. And don't miss part two of this roundup coming soon on the channel where I look at a number of 360 millimeter all-in-one coolers between 130 and 180 that will attempt to challenge the liquid freezer to 360. Until then, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru.